reinforcing sounds. By Kortsa. Ultralight yet immensely tough, stronger than steel but exceptionally flexible. Composites, the miracle material of the century. You are listening to Reinforcing Sounds podcast by Kortsa. It's Aisha from Corporate Communication Department. In this episode of Reinforcing Sounds, we are going to be talking on continuous carbon fibers in 3D printing. A large number of composite manufacturing processes have been developed over the last 40 years. Today, let's dive into 3D printing and how composites have gained popularity, especially in recent decades with Koray Tansu Ilhan, project engineer at Composite Technologies Department at Korsa. First of all, let's get some context on the 3D technology. What is it and how do you describe the primary benefits of additive manufacturing technologies? Hi, Aisha. Please let me start with the definition of additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing is a specific 3D printing process, and this process builds parts layer by layer by depositing material according to digital 3D design data. Additive manufacturing is truly innovative. It opens up new opportunities and lends itself to many possibilities for companies looking to improve manufacturing efficiency. According to several academic studies, additive manufacturing is a powerful tool to reduce complexity in the supply chain in a variety of approaches. When we come to the advantages of additive manufacturing, additive manufacturing is reduce the lead time, material vestige, and cost. It was observed that there is an average saving of 80% both in cost and time over the traditional methods. In material sector, it was observed that the raw material vestige is reduced by up to 40 percentage when using additive manufacturing process instead of machining process. And of course, additive manufacturing also improved the quality of prototyping. The quality of the parts produced from this method all satisfy the requirements for prototype testing and a significant improvement in the mechanical properties and surface characteristics were noticed in comparison to vacuum casting parts. Also, I like to add uh, complex geometries about additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing, with the help of this new technology, it is now possible to fabricate complex shaped parts of almost any geometry as well as customized parts. And of course, at least, but not least, and also it's my favorite improvement, no tools, molds, punches are needed in additive manufacturing. It fabricates parts directly from its CAD data without any tooling and without human intervention. That's amazing. To sum up, additive manufacturing can be defined as the industrial production name for the 3D printing. And AM Technologies offers significant cost savings due to the reduced material waste and the capability for tool-less production, right? Yeah, it is. Every day, new methods and materials continue to spring up in the production area. What are the most preferred 3D printing methods and materials, Korai? Oh, <laughs> even though there are a number of different technologies for 3D printing, I mean, such as material extrusion, powder bed fusion, watt polymerization, material jetting, and binder jetting, two primary technologies dominate the market for additive manufacturing using polymer-based materials. And these materials are usually best suited for prototypes of a future metal part to ensure the right fit or to make a mold for a cast later on. For non-structural parts, this plastic manufacturing may be perfectly suitable. The two main leading technologies in this area are the typical fused deposition modeling and stereolithography. Let me talk about both technologies briefly, Aisha. The FDM process is where a heated extruder heat applies one layer of near molten plastic at a time. This is our normal 3D printing process popularized by modern hobby manufacturers. All of this process together, although they are not all 3D printing technically, are well considered the additive manufacturing process. And when we come to the SLA, 
an object is created by selectively curing a polymer resin layer by layer using an UV laser beam. The materials is used in SLA are photosensitive thermoset polymers that come in a liquid form. If we compare both methods briefly, thermoplastic and thermoset polymers are used in FDM and SLA respectively. Okay, so how did composites rapidly gain acceptance as a key enabler in 3D printing? Nowadays, all production from the smallest ones to large companies and research activities are affected by the use of 3D printing technology. The major limitation is 3D printable materials and their limited spectrum of physical chemical properties. To expand this spectrum and employ the 3D printed objects in areas such as, I don't know, biomedical, mechanical, electronical, and so on, the introduction of fibers or particles in a polymer matrix has been widely studied and applied. Composites are widely sought after because of their incredible material properties. Carbon fiber is just one example and offering high strength to weight ratio. You might add other fibers if you seek better toughness, via resistance, or I don't know, conductive properties. You can add ceramic, glass, or aramid fibers. And for example, injection molded parts that are fiber filled typically show 20 to 100% increases in strength and stiffness. This is high. Additive manufacturing is hungry for this type of step change and 3D printed parts, and it is no wonder that composites are gaining traction. In the 3D printing sector, manufacturers are increasingly looking for composite materials because they offer more interesting mechanical properties, particularly in terms of resistance. And today, most desktop FDM 3D printers can print composite filaments as long as they have hardened steel nozzle. However, these mach machines do not allow the fibers to be deposited directly into the matrix material during the printing. For this reason, several manufacturers have developed solutions capable of extruding both the matrix and the fibers to obtain even stronger parts. And this is why composites gain acceptance in 3D printing technology. Combining the power of composites materials with a 3D printing process using advanced machine is the feature. So you say some applications may need materials with unusual combinations of properties which cannot be provided by metals, polymers or ceramics alone. For such applications, composite materials including two or more materials allow the combination of the required properties in a single material. This is huge, Korai. Composite 3D printing is an emerging technology with a bright feature. What are the advantages of composites over monolithic materials, let's say? Composites offer a number of significant manufacturing advantages over monolithic metals and ceramics. For example, fiber reinforced polymers and ceramics can be fabricated in large, complex shapes that would be difficult or impossible to make with other materials. The ability to fabricate complex shapes allows consolidation of parts, which reduces machining, assembly, and fastener costs. Some processes allow fabrication of parts to their final shape, or close to their final shape at least, which also produces manufacturing cost savings. The relative ease with which smooth shapes can be made is a significant factor in the use of composites in aircraft, wind turbine blades, and other applications for which aerodynamic considerations are important. Conventional monolithic materials have limitations in achieving good combination of strength, stiffness, toughness, and density. To overcome these shortcomings and to meet the ever-increasing demand of modern-day technology, composites are most promising materials of resin interest because they don't have that limitation. To summarize, composites have a high strength to weight ratio and they are durable. And of course, composites open up new design options. 
Okay, my last question is about a special project. We already know that Corsa aims to increase its know-how in this field and participates in the European Union funded directional composites through the Manufacturing Innovation DICOMI project. Within the context of Horizon 2020 program, could you please tell us about the details of DICOMI project? Aisha, I'm glad to ask this question. DICOMI project is a Horizon 2020 project, as you say, and it's actually a Mercury action. Mercury Actions supports researchers at all stages of their careers, regardless of age and nationality. Researchers working across all disciplines are eligible for funding. Mercury Actions also encourage cooperation between industry and academia and aim to promote innovative training to enhance employability and career development. The di directional composites through manufacturing innovation, which is also called DICOMI project, aims to bring together leading innovators from across Europe and beyond to develop a new method of producing composite material parts with optimized fiber directionality. The DICOMI project will integrate advanced manufacturing techniques, composite material science, and manufacturing system design. As such, it requires a high level of interdisciplinary cooperation, as well as collaboration between researchers and industry. The outcome will be a novel composite manufacturing system capable of producing low cost parts with increased accuracy and enhanced functionality. In the scope of DICOMI project in 2019, Kortsa organized two segments with Loughborough University United Kingdom, and the Technical University of Cluj-Napoca, Romania. In January 2020, six researchers and two professors from Loughborough University, the Technical University of Cluj-Napoca, and Kharkiv Aviation Industry, which is in Ukraine, visited Kortsa and published research reports. Second month to our project's partners will continue and articles will be written as a consequence of ensuing research. Since it's a Mercury action, Kortsa is obligated for only second months. We plan new second months to Loughborough University and Kharkiv Aviation Institute in the future. I will be working on developing new continuous carbon fibers this year. And when we are able to do some second months, I am willing to do some 3D printing trials in Loughborough University with newly developed nozzles. And with the data that I will gain, I intend to write a research article. Wow, you feel really lucky to be innovators with across to Europe and beyond to develop a new method for producing composite material parts with optimized fiber directionally. Korai, thank you for your valuable ideas and participation. See you at next episodes of Reinforcing Sounds. Reinforcing Sounds by Kortsa. <laughs>